Hi, this is Ms. Mitchell, and today we are going to talk about choosing classes for your senior year. Be sure that you've joined the Course Registration Google Classroom. This is different from your Class of 23 Google Classroom, so it's a separate class. You probably joined it last year, but double check because that's where we'll be posting information specific to RHS registration. We also encourage that you use the Rogers Public Schools course catalog. That's going to give you your specific information about all the courses taught in RPS. The Google Classroom will be more specific just to RHS classes. So let's do a quick review of graduation requirements. You have to have 24 credits and they have to be in the correct categories. So you must have four credits of English, four credits of math, three credits of science, three credits of social studies, one credit for PE, a half credit of health, a half credit of fine art, a half credit of an oral communications class, a half credit of a career and technology education class, and seven electives. This will add up to your 24 and get you graduated. You do not have to have a world language unless you're trying to graduate with honors. Don't forget, you can try to earn your biliteracy seal if you are fluent in two languages. And at the end of 11th grade, we need you to have 16 and a half credits to be considered on track to graduate. If your goal is to graduate with honors, you do have to do some specific things. You have to have a math higher than Algebra 2, and you have to make sure that your science courses have covered physical science, biology, and either chemistry or physics. For the three levels of honor grad, they're determined by your GPA and the number of AP courses that you've taken. So to be eligible for the lowest level of honor grad, you have to have at least a 3.3 GPA, and you have to have two AP courses for that. For the next level, which is high honors, you have to have a 3.75 GPA and at least four AP courses. And then for distinguished honors, that's the highest level, you have to have a 4.0 GPA and at least five AP courses. You all should have received a pink course selection worksheet, so make sure you've got that. Now, I want you to put your name and your ID number on it and then set it aside because I want you to listen to what I'm saying and not um, get ahead. We're probably gonna answer most of the questions you have, so just kind of follow along with the video and then you can go back to your pink sheet and finish it afterwards. Please clearly mark your choices. Don't use a highlighter because it bleeds through and kind of makes a mess on your form. Um, we do want you to write in the course request boxes. So if you'll look at your form, you'll see there's a place to list your seven classes, um, and then there is a place to list your alternates below that. So that's really important that you follow those instructions. This year, you've got a very short turnaround time to get your teacher recommendations. So you actually need to get them in the next couple of days. We're gonna begin seeing juniors on January 27th and we'll finish by February 11th. This is a major difference. Usually we call you in through your English class and you all come in at one time. This year, we're gonna do junior conferences. So what that means is that your counselor will call you in and you're expected to be ready with your course requests. We're also gonna do some college and career um, discussion with you during your conference. If you're applying for um, something like an SCC program or internship, be sure and mark that on your form, but choose other classes. We can't place you into those programs until we know if you've been accepted. So fill out your schedule, make a note that you're applying for something. A few things to look out for. Make sure that you're getting teacher recommendations for your advanced courses. Have your teacher's initial on your form. Your teacher should be um, taking into consideration not just the work that you've turned in and done in that class, but also your work ethic and your strengths and weaknesses. You do not have to take an advanced course, even if it's recommended for you. So if you get loaded up with advanced recommendations, but you're thinking that that's gonna to be too hard for your senior year, just let us know and you don't have to take all of those courses. Be sure to research your courses, choose things that you're gonna that you're gonna like because you're in them for the year. Do the same thing with your alternates, choose those very wisely. And remember that you're making a commitment. We don't have a lot of room, um, in, we don't have empty seats usually to be moving a lot of classes around and dropping classes, you know, that doesn't look great when you're doing your college applications, so choose very wisely. As you're choosing your classes for senior year, here's a list of things that'll help you decide what you wanna take. So we definitely encourage you to think about your work ethic and how hard you wanna work next year. What are your goals if you're trying to graduate with a capstone diploma or be an honor grad or earn the biliteracy seal or you're in RHA, you have specific things that you probably need to take to help you meet that goal. Also, if you have failed classes and failed to recover them, 
um, up to this point, you've got to put them on your senior year schedule because you're out of time. So make sure that you include those. Think about outside of school. What do you do? Are you in a sport? Do you have a job? Do you do a bunch of community service? Balance your school um, choices with your outside workload so that you don't overdo it. Now, most students, well, maybe not most, but a whole lot of seniors are gonna say, what's the easiest thing I can do um, next year? How do I get the easiest schedule possible? And if that is truly your goal, then we can help you do that. But please think about what's gonna put you in the best place for applying for college and um, competing for scholarships and things like that. Not only that, but this is your last year of free education. So what's gonna help you in your future? What would be good for you to learn before you're out in the adult world? We don't encourage you taking the easiest schedule possible just because it's your senior year. So for your senior year, you have a choice for your advanced courses. You can either take AP classes or ECE or concurrent classes, or you can take a combination of both. So let's kind of dive into the differences here. AP courses you're already familiar with. These are college board courses, so they are the same no matter where you take them. If you take um, AP English Literature here at Rogers High School, it should be the same as someone taking it in Dallas, in New York City, or even in London, England. Um, because they are an international curriculum. As you know, you have to score a three or higher to even be considered for college hours, and some colleges are gonna be looking for a four or higher on those exams. For your ECE courses, you're actually enrolled through NWAC. So you're taking things like Comp 1 and Comp 2 or College Algebra through NWAC. You take them on our campus, taught by our teacher, but our teacher during that class is uh, technically working for NWAC. So these actually go directly on your transcript. So you would have an NWAC transcript that shows that you took these courses. This is a great option if you know you're going to school at a public school in the state of Arkansas because these hours will be accepted. However, if you're thinking about going out of state, you might lean towards AP because we cannot guarantee that your ECE hours will be accepted out of state. Also keep in mind that should th something go wrong and you make a bad grade in an ECE class, that is already on a college transcript. So we offer concurrent or ECE classes in both English and math, and you do have to qualify for those. So not only do you have to have a 3.0 GPA to take the classes, you also have to have certain test scores. And we're primarily talking about the ACT. We can go back and look at some other test options um, for scores if you do not have the ACT scores. We cannot enroll you in these courses until you have the test scores. So if you come in and you say, hey, Ms. Mitchell, I wanna take comp one and comp two, and you have no ACT scores, I cannot put you in it because NWAC won't enroll you in it. So therefore, I would have to put you in either English 12 or AP English Literature until you can get me some test scores. So let's take a look at these. You'll see for the college comp classes that you need a 19 in reading on the ACT and a 19 on English on the ACT. For college algebra, which is the first math, you take that one in the fall semester and then the others come in the spring, you have to have at least a 19 on your reading ACT and then you have to have a 21 or higher on your math ACT. So how do you figure out what to take? First, use the course catalog and the Google Classroom. Those are both resources available to you. Talk to your current teachers, not only for teacher recommendations, but also for their advice on things that would be good for you to take. Talk to other students who have had classes and figure out um, if they can give you any good advice on that. And then refer to your student success plan in Navience, um, that's your four-year plan, and your career assessments and look at things that will help you in the future. Hopefully by now you know how to log into your Navience account. Um, if you don't, you're gonna need to get in there and get familiar with it because you have to do several things with your college applications and transcript orders in Navient. So we want you to be familiar with it. There are several things that might help you with picking classes. Um, three career interest inventories um, are available to you for free. They are the Strengths Explorer, the Career Cluster Finder, and the Career Interest Profiler. And if you take these, not only do they point you in the direction of um, good matches for careers, but they might also help you figure out some things to take in high school um, that you can explore for free before you graduate. And then you can always go back and look at your four-year plan, also known as your student success plan, and see what you picked previously and decide if you still want to take those courses.
So we're going to talk briefly about core classes. So in the past, you typically have needed an English, a math, a science, and a social studies, but this year maybe you don't. Maybe you've already completed most of those requirements. Every student does need to take an English. So you either need to take English 12, AP Literature, or Comp 1 and 2. And there will be a few exceptions where someone might need to take AP English language as a senior. So like if you took English 11 this year and you want to take an AP English, then your course would be AP English language. As far as a math, every senior should take a math because if you um, are even thinking about college or trade school, you do not want to go a year without a math class. It will make it really hard when you go back into your education and have to pick up your math skills. So that's a long time to take a gap, so take a math class. Talk to your teachers and let them help you pick an appropriate math class. Um, as far as science and social studies, you probably don't need one for graduation. Some of you may. But again, the more core classes, the better, um, especially if you're trying to look impressive on your college applications, or just if you want to know as much as you can possibly know as a high school graduate. So a few things to remember when you're filling out your form. Some classes do require a tryout or an application, or in the case of those ECE courses, requirements like test scores. Do not list them as one of your classes. Go ahead and choose your other classes and then we'll discuss and you can tell us how you want to substitute things once you get accepted or after your tryout or when you get your test scores. Now, if you're in a sport, you can definitely sign up for the same one. Same thing with like certain choir groups, you can sign up for the same one that you're already in. Um, if you're a football player or a volleyball player, you're only going to be in your sport for the fall semester. So choose a half credit class to plug in for the spring. And keep in mind your prerequisite courses. So go through the uh, course catalog and that will let you know if you're qualified to sign up for each course. Be sure that you choose at least four alternates because they do get used. Do not pick a study hall. We use study hall kind of sparingly and that's at your counselor's discretion. Here's some of the programs that you do have to try out for. So you've got athletics, um, cheer, dance team, yearbook and newspaper, choir and show choir. Um, if you wanted to be a library aide, you have to apply for that. Internship, we're going to talk about that later and you have to have an application for that. And then any of the college level programs require an application. Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about the SCC. The SCC is the Secondary Career Center. And they offer all kinds of career programs off campus, either through NWTI or NWAC. These programs are all competitive because they take students from Bentonville and Fayetteville and Springdale and Pea Ridge and all over the whole NWA area. So you've got to apply early. We're asking that you get your applications in by February 25th. And there's two steps to that. You are going to, um, you can click on the link here or on the form I gave you, you can um, scan the first QR code. You're going to fill out an online form, then you're going to fill out a paper form. Okay, so keep that in mind. You got to get it turned in by February 25th so that we can get it to NWTI for you or NWAC for you by March 1st. You do have to have a 2.0 GPA and you can review this list of programs. Notice that construction is in yellow and it says TBD because that one is still to be determined, um, but the rest of these are already established programs. We have several new classes to offer this year. If you took fashion and interior design, we are going to have the second year of that, so you can sign up for the advanced class. We have different pathways for our architecture and engineering classes. And so um, the new classes, you're going to start with drafting and design, and then you can choose either architectural CAD or engineering CAD and take a separate pathway for those classes. We're also um, looking to start a first responder course, which would be new in the medical fields. And over at Heritage, they already have um, automotive classes, but they are adding medium and heavy truck. So if you're interested in like diesel technology um, or truck mechanics, then that would be a really good class to sign up for. We're expanding the teacher program, so we're gonna have a second year of that. We're bringing in robotics, which is a computer science course. We're adding to the business courses, and then there's veterinary science, which is a second year um, following animal science. And then a few things have different names that you'll see on your course selection worksheet. So all of the art classes are now called Visual Art Foundations 1 through 4, um, instead of just Art 1 through 4. 
College Comp 2, this is new and very important. In the past, Comp 1 has been the class that counts towards your senior, your senior English, but now you're gonna have to pass Comp 2. So Comp 1 will be an elective, and then Comp 2 will be your English 12 credit. And then there's um, a change to game development. We've always had that, but it's been an upper level course, and now that it has a level one. So anybody can take game design and development. And then Stagecraft has a new name. It is now called Technical Theater. So now I'm gonna to explain to you how you can get Community Service Learning Credit or the CSL credit. This is a credit that is a state approved course. Um, it will go on your transcript and all you have to do is earn 75 hours of community service. So you're not actually taking a class, you're just being awarded credit for community service that you do. So we know that a lot of you all have already done community service projects. All you guys need to do is find the class of 2023 code and go in there, log your hours. You can log them all in one big um, like lump, but it may be easier for most people to log them as you go. And so once you think that you're close to 75 hours, then you will let the registrar and your counselor know and we will post the credit. We want everybody to get this credit. So we're encouraging all of our students to go ahead and start scanning and logging your hours. And a couple of ways that this will benefit you. Um, one, let's say that you might be a little bit behind in credits. This is a relatively easy way to get a full credit posted on your transcript. Also, when you're applying for your colleges, you're gonna self-report your community service hours. However, this will give you something um, in black and white that colleges will see that proves that you did a lot of community service. So that's kind of a nice bonus there. Also, as a senior, a lot of you guys may want to um, try to become a graduate of Promise, and that also requires 75 hours. And so these hours will overlap. Um, if you do 75 hours and you get the community service credit, then you automatically have those hours towards Graduate of Promise and vice versa. Some things that are specifically available to seniors. One that you can take is called internship, and this is what people um, call the work program. If you have a job, you can definitely apply for internship. You do have to apply and get accepted for it. You do have to have a job by the 10th day of school and you have to meet some certain uh, rules with your job. You have to work a certain number of hours and you have to log in and turn in paperwork weekly. Um, this is also the class that does allow you to have your afternoons off um, because you're getting what's called work-based learning. So you're getting credit for the work that you do. Another class that is mostly limited to seniors just because it fills up so much is outdoor ed. Outdoor ed is a great class that gives you one and a half credits for just a one period class. You do have to take both semesters of it. So this is not one semester of PE and one semester of science. It is um, instead the whole class is integrated together. So to get those credits, you have to take the entire year of the course. So if you want that class, I recommend that you put it on your course choices and not as an alternate, um, just because it does fill up. And then be sure you review this list of things to do and not do. Definitely pick your classes and your alternates, get your teacher recs, um, do your research. We do have to make um, schedules for any student that doesn't follow instructions and turn their stuff in. So if you don't want a counselor created schedule, please follow the instructions. Here's some important dates for you. Um, January 24th, that's what we're doing now, is kicking off registration. January 27th to February 11th, that's when you meet with your counselor about your request. Remember when I said you had a very short turnaround time to uh, get your teacher recommendations? You have two days. So on January, um, I guess three, January 24th, 25th, and 26th, you need to be getting your recommendations so that you're ready to go when we start calling juniors in on January 27th. February 11th is the last day to turn in course request forms. We do expect you to be ready though. When we call you in, we want you to come in and let's go ahead and have your meeting. We, um, February 11th does not mean that you can say, oh, I'm not ready, I wanna come back on the 11th. That just simply means like if you're absent or quarantined or something, then you gotta get it in by February 11th. February 25th, that's your deadline to turn in applications for those SCC programs. March 31st is the last day to turn in your test scores for ECE classes. And then March 31st is also the last day to make any changes to your 22-23 course requests. So this is some information for those of you who may be missing a lot of school for one reason or the other. Um, 
in some cases we will have to do your registration virtually. So if that applies to you, then when I send this out to you, just go back and kind of read through this. Okay, double check that you've got all your classes and your alternates. Um, be aware that you need to put in anything that you need for graduation. If you've been postponing something, you can't do that anymore. It's got to go on your schedule. Be sure to sign your form and try to get a parent signature. Be ready because we're doing it th differently this year. Instead of coming in with your English class, just be ready when you're called in for your conference. And then remember that after March 31st, we won't um, do anything but fix your request. We, we're going to do schedule corrections as always, but not just changing things because you changed your mind. Be sure that you're on your counselor's remind. We do send out a lot of reminders and um, information regarding registration and scheduling that way. So you don't want to miss out on that. So be sure that you um, are signed up if you haven't already. And thank you. And we look forward to meeting with you and helping you choose your classes for 12th grade.